How's it going? I'm Anthony Todd. Today I'm going to show you how to do the question number two from the AP Physics C Mechanics 2021 free response question. And this is set number two. Okay. And obviously, let's go ahead and start off. So an object A is a long, thin, uniform rod, mass M, and a length of 2L. Okay. It's free to rotate around a pivot point, negligible friction, as shown here. Okay. Using integrated calculus, derive an expression to show that the rotational inertia, IA, of object A is about the pivot is given four thirds. Okay. So pretty much we know the moment of inertia is equal to the integral of the some distance squared dm. Well, this dm here is just a change in mass over some sort of, you know, our linear mass density here. And this lambda, which is our density, will be, you know, density is mass over volume or mass over length. And it's m over 2L. Okay, so now we know this. And in this case, we're actually integrating from 0 because the pivot point is here. And this is 2L. So we integrate from 0 to 2L. So we can actually really rewrite this. 0 to L, L squared, uh, dm. We can even write this. Uh, DL if you want to. And this DM actually gives us this. And it goes, da, 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 da. It's right, it's 2L. And that's going to give us lambda DL. And remember, lambda is a constant, so we don't integrate that. So that actually comes out front. And integrating L squared, we actually get L cubed. So we have this lambda. Oops, excuse me. L cubed over 3. And that is from 0 to 2L. And then we plug things in. So this 2L goes in there. So we're going to have, that is what? 8 times L cubed um, all over 3. So we plug this in right there. And then 0 goes in there. And obviously that just goes to 0. And now we plug in our lambda, which is just 2M. M over 2L. So that gives us multiplied. Let's just rewrite this. M over 2L, 8L cubed, all over, what was that, 3? So that gives us um, the 3, 6. So this actually simplifies into 4 thirds ML. And this L cancels out with that squared. And that backs up what we got. So I feel like that would be an acceptable answer for um, part A to give you full credit. Okay, part, let's go to the second part of this. Now, object B of mass M is formed by attaching two thin uniform identical. Okay, so we have a new object here. So this is a new object. So it is different than the original object. Okay, so let's look at it. And they're formed at a right angle um, to each other. Object B is held in place as shown. So this object is not moving. So it's a new object and it's not moving. Okay, that's important to know. So they're just saying, they're just holding it here. So this is, this, is, this is just the shape of it. Determine the following for the given coordinate system as shown. Uh, oh, determine the following. The x coordinate of the center of mass of object B. Okay, so this is going to be pretty simple. This is just an x calculation or a center of mass calculation. Summation of all the masses times um, their, where it's at, all over the mass total. All right, so let's look at this. So we have two different pieces here, it said. They're kind of, I guess they want you to treat them as two different pieces. Yeah, too thin, okay. So they got two different pieces. And let's look at their center of mass. Well, this one's obviously going to be in the center, and this one's going to be in the center. So we have two coordinates here, and let's go right here from 0, 0. So this distance from here to there is going to be L over 2. And this distance from here, well, from here to there is also just going to be straight up L. All right, so when we do this, we have M times L over 2 plus uh, M times L all over the mass total. So that would be M plus M, which is just M over 2. And what does that give us? Uh, that's 3 over 2 ML divided by 2M. So that actually gives us 3 fourths L. 
So they're going to be, the center of mass in the X position is going to be somewhere over here. So 3 fourths L. Okay, and that makes sense. And the Y coordinate. So uh, since this object's not moving, we can just treat it like a stationary object. So let's just do this. So the center of mass for this, and we just try to use a different color. For this one is actually the height of it is just L over 2. And this height is actually L. So if you actually look at this, the Y, the center of mass of the Y is, is actually going to be the same. Because if you think about it, um, this mass is now L over 2. And this mass is just height L. So it's the exact same thing. Oops, divided by 2m. That we just did. So 3 fourths L. So they are the same. All right. So that puts our center of mass at 3 fourths L, or in the x, and 3 fourths. So that actually puts our center of mass somewhere right in there. Okay, so not too hard. So let's move on to the next one. So here, object B has a rotation on inertia of IB about its pivot. So remember, this was object B. And it was, what, 2L? So that puts its center of mass at, the center of mass is at L, okay? It has a moment of inertia of IB. Is the value of IB greater than, less than, or equal to, so the, is IB greater than, less than, or equal to that of IA? So IA, we have this. All right, now, when we look at this, the center of mass of this one, IA, was there and there, so that puts that center of mass directly here. And remember, this is our pivot point. So what's interesting is, um, if you think about it, which one of these, uh, which the mass is concentrated towards the center of IA, okay? That means IB, um, the value of IB is greater than, less than, or equal to. Um, I would actually say IA, its mass is actually closer to the pivot point. If you look at it like this, so I would say uh, IB um, is actually less than, oops, sorry, greater than its center of mass, yep, because IB would be greater than IA, and we know that a smaller moment of inertia will cause it to move a bit faster, so you have more mass concentrated towards the center, if you think about it. It's wanting to know about the center of mass there, so I think that's an acceptable answer. Use your bright um, IA's mass is closer to the pivot point. You can write point P if you want to. And I feel like this kind of drawing would kind of justify that, all right? And I think it is as it bends it down. Pardon you can another way you can justify it is this has more mass out here and it'll kind of slow that down. Think about a figure skater with her arms out and as she pulls them in, um, she'll spin faster. So that, that kind of makes sense. All right. Now, object B, so object B, object B, so object B, so this is this uh, boomerang object we got here, is now released from rest and is allowed to begin to rotate. Oh, so now it's going to spin. All right, so we're going to remove. Um, on the gases below, sketch the magnitude of the angular acceleration okay. and the speed. So it's going to swing down like such. Okay, so the axis below, uh, sketch the magnitude of the angular acceleration. Okay. So whenever this object starts to move, well, I didn't really draw it the best to scale, but I'm assuming it's asking about the center of mass, okay? But we know as it starts to pivot, so we're going to be moving like such, um, I know the initial angular velocity of this thing is going to be zero, and I know it's going to pick up to some angular velocity up here, okay? And we know that torque is equal to I alpha. And alpha is actually dW dt. So you can even rewrite torque as I dW dt. All righty. So when we look at this, we can see this object is going to, remember, angular velocity is about how much is this changing. 
And as his optic actually swings, you know, and it makes the reaches the bottom right here. So I'm going to draw the bottom of this. Okay. It's going to kind of slowly increase, but then I would say it stops right here because this, this angular, as it starts to, you know, gain more potential energy, it's got to slow back down and it comes back up to zero. So I'm actually thinking this is going to be some type of, uh, not a linear line, but kind of like such. And that's kind of easy to understand. Um, and I'm sure you could take the, the, uh, the derivative of the, you know, position or the angular velocity function, take the derivative, kind of give you the shape of it. But if you notice, this slope is going to be kind of great and increasing. But then if you notice, it starts to decrease. So what that means is the slope of this is our angular acceleration. So what that means is we're actually going from very high to, to zero right here. So we're going for something like this. And I bet you they're just mirror images of each other, like such. Yep, so if you're like this, very high, angular velocity, and as we slowly go down, to zero. Okay, I think that'll work. I like that. All right. Let's look at this one. All right. And object B already sees from horizontal position down. Okay, but it's the magnitude of angular acceleration is increasing. Oh, we already said it, it is decreasing. Okay, so that's that part. And now to drive an expression for the angular speed of object B when it is position shown. Okay, so we know it was up here. And we know the actual center of mass of this object is actually right here, and it's actually three fourths L from the top. Okay, and that's, remember we did that very, very beginning. And we actually would kind of look at it like this. We know this object has um, potential energy and all that's going to go to kinetic rotational energy because we're asking for angular speed. And we know that's mgh equals i omega squared over 2. And I believe like, like, like we said, our h is that. It's 3 fourths L. So mg 3 L all over 4 is equal to i. Now, I don't know what the i of b is. I'm just going to use this variable here, omega squared over 2. And so, um, let's think about this. Oh, okay. Oh, well, I almost messed up. Oh, yeah. Okay. Tricky, tricky, tricky. Now, even though this height is 3 fourths L, as it actually swings through, the angular momentum actually, the center of mass actually doesn't go to the very bottom. So it's actually not 3 fourths. This is actually a quarter right here. Tricky. Okay. So this is not actually 3 fourths. It actually falls L over 2. Ah, so be very careful about that. If you put three fourths, I'm sure you get partial credit, um, but that's kind of a tricky question. I like, okay, okay. So it's L over two, so that makes sense. That, that cancels out, and we are left with this equation right here. Omega squared is equal to MGL O over I of B, so the moment of inertia of B. And solving for that, we get square root of MGL over IB. All right, so I hope this helps. Um, if you're looking for the other solutions, uh, well, attempted solutions, please check my YouTube channel. Please give me a thumbs up and a like and subscribe for more content. Thank you.